And let's bring in a beautiful liquid golden light in the great central sun and just move it through your crown. Keep breathing deeply, slowly, rhythmically. Move it down your core, your central core. Move it all the way down your hips, legs. Down the feet, touching the nerve endings. And down into the center of the earth. And feel this connectiveness to Mother Earth, to Gaia. And now let's go back up to the heart and move that beautiful golden energy and feel it behind the heart, the breastbone, the heart area. Touch that area. And again, let's go to bring in moments of joy and gratitude and thankfulness. However, whatever that feels for you and however you need to get there. It may be for being at this lovely conference for the weekend. We've had a lovely conference and we hope you have. So if you're grateful for that, if that brought you joy, that's immediate. We can go to that. And as you feel that, Watch that golden light expand in your heart. And allow it to encompass all your bodies. Expanding. Filling this room with the golden light of love. Each breath, it expands gently. And now, let's hold the earth in our hands. And let's see that golden light expand into the planet, around the planet, filling it with love and joy and gratitude. Filling the grid of human consciousness with gratitude and thankfulness and joy and love. With each breath, it expands more and more. To feel the richness of the people smiling and the children, see the children smile. See them as they experience this golden light, as it brings them the joy. They feel that joy in their hearts. Now let's connect that golden energy to the heart of every, every being on the planet, around the planet, in the planet. Joy is your birthright. Feel it, know it, own it. It is yours. Place your intent on that. And now, let's the iridescent rainbow mist fill you, fill your auric field and fill the planet. 
further manifesting this intent of love and joy and thankfulness and the golden energy, beautiful iridescent rainbow mist, that which is the morphogenic field, iridescent rainbow mist. this joy. I know it is so. I know that you are dearly loved. I know that you are loved. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones, I am. Crying of magnetic service. There are no rules, really, that could describe what you see here. For in the quantumness of the energy, that allows for such a communication. All of the linearity is suspended. And yet there are still those with linear intellect that will say such a thing cannot be. That God does not speak to humans this way this easily it's too informal you would say there needs to be some some history here it has to be more than what you see here and so a man who sits on a stage cannot bring forth therefore the essence of God the essence of spirit the truth channeling. They would say that. And the same ones who would say that are the ones who have open in front of them the scriptures of the ages by the prophets who have lived and died and had their apostles long after them write their words. they would say this is inappropriate that you would sit here without a belief system without a doctrine without a prophet without a master in an informal place in temporary chairs and out would come message from God. Well, let us speak of informality for a moment. Let's speak of inappropriate places for a moment. Let me rewind history just for a moment. A man sits in a cell. Very dimly lit it is. And what you don't know about this place where he is, is that it stinks. It's late at night. This man knows he may never get out of jail. He 
This man is alive with the love of God. And on parchment, in his own writing, he writes letters to friends. And the letters go like this. Dear friends, I have discovered something unique. Unique to this age. Unique to life. Unique to the planet. I've discovered the love of God through, through a master that I believe. I write this 30 years after his death that I am on fire with the love of God. Who am I speaking of? I speak about Paul the Apostle. I speak of Saul of Tarsus. Once successful businessman who sacrificed everything because he found a message that rang true to him, a message that the earth needed, that he felt he should pursue. The letters went out to his friends in Corinth, <laughs> in Ephesus. In Ephesus, that became the Ephesians. In Corinth, it was Corinthians. One man, one pen. And that became the Word of God. Did you notice that? And that, my friends, was channeling. Informal enough for you or not? All of the scriptures on the planet, all of the ancient prophecies that rang with love, all of the truths written in all of the pages that are the Word of God were written by men and women with open hearts. All of them. And here you are in 2009. in an informal gathering. And some would still say it is not appropriate. It has to be a little grander than this. Find your truth. It's okay. But for those who are tuned into this, I tell you this is real. There are those in this place who have had the gifts all their life. The gifts of second sight. The ones who can see the colors. The ones who can see the attributes of spirit when they're present. And they can know when it's being faked or not. And so I say to you in this assemblage who sit in that place, look at me and tell me. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? Because I'm showing the colors. For those who can see them, I'm showing them. You can't fake that. And if you could rewind in history with a time machine to the place where Paul sat in that stinky cell, you'd see the same light. Because through him, for his age, for his time, for his prophet, was pouring the love of God. So what did you learn today? It's about the heart, isn't it? The eloquence of the science, of the things coming together that, that speak so well of where the power is. For 20 years, this has been the message of Cryon not in your head, in your heart. And now it starts to be resonated, even with those who can calibrate, even with those who are non-spiritual. In the corners of the planet where they are working on those kinds of calibrations without even understanding the correlation. And what it means. 
fill in the missing piece with me tonight. This is not going to be an endurance channel. This is not a time for teaching. We are going to go to the heart. I told my partner right before we came here, onto this chair in this evening, that he was in a safe place, that he would not make a fool of himself. If he would open his heart and allow for what is going to transpire now, one of the most esoteric things we have ever done. This will stretch you into places perhaps you've never gone before. It's about the heart, you know. It's not about overthinking, figuring it out. The missing piece. What is this about? How could this be accomplished that your heart would have such a powerful influence on those around you? How could it be that it would have such an influence on the very earth itself, the attributes, the magnetics, the quantumness, the crystalline grid, the Akashic record? Are you really that powerful? What is it inside you that would create that? You saw the mechanics of it today. Perhaps you're reeling with the information. How powerful, how succinct, how beautiful. <clears throat> but why? Are the other animals on the planet involved? Not really, they are, but not like you are. Because the plan has it that the human being would come to this planet as a piece of the Creator inside, not separate, not apart, not a piece of biology, but an integrated piece of God. And that in that arrangement, without an organization, without planning of any kind, perhaps even being in a jail cell, they could figure it out. And they could find their, their truth by themselves if they wished. But then that truth would align so well with what others were finding out. Inside you, there's more than biology. It is the message of cryon. It is the spiritual attribute of everything you've seen today. It is the reason there is so much power. There's more than meets the eye here. Could it be that you are a piece of the Creator, eternal in both directions, is it possible? That within each one of you is the spark of eternal life. That in that Akashic record of yours, there is a record of many, many lives, perhaps going back as far as when it began. 50,000 years, oh, that's a stretch, isn't it? Perhaps in that same Akashic record, there's a promise of lives to come way past 2012. And what does that make you? It makes you a piece of the Creator. And you may say, well, crying, I sure don't feel that way. And I will tell you, human being, that's by design. Not to make it hard, to make it fair. I'm going to take you somewhere now, and it's up to you how far you can go with me. It's up to you how much you can suspend your intellect. 
I want to take you someplace that's very real. Everything I'm going to do for these next few moments has happened. I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to reverse the tables of me with you. This is going to be a one-on-one -on -one interview, me with you. But it's the collective you. It takes into account the various lives that I'm looking at right now because I know every single, every single one of you, oh, in a much different way than you think I do for the, the face in the mirror. <laughs> the one that you got used to. That's not who I know. That's temporary, by the way. Very temporary. I want to take you to a place where I'm going to be sitting at your feet. I'm not the master magnetics energy there. I want to take you to the other side of the veil. Right before this incarnation. Can you go there with me? You see, we really were there together. In a quantum state, there is no time. Where I'm going right now is happening in real time. You will say, it's before you got to Earth. Yes, in a linear clock fashion. But to me, it's happening all the time. How can I explain to a human being about the suspension of a linear time frame? Just trust me. It is what it is. Come with me. Come with me. And remember, there are seeds of this truth in your DNA. As I take you there, we are not in a place at all. No such thing as a place in a quantumness. It is a reality of being that I sit at your feet and you are magnificent. A piece of God that is one of trillions upon trillions of energetic lattices. <laughs> A piece of the whole. Hard to describe how you can be one and many at the same time. But there you are. Indeed, you are individual, but you are collective. I am part of that. As I speak to you now in this room, I am part of that. My partner is being given a glimpse. Oh. The winds of light blow upon us in a, in a cool fashion as we sit upon the universe itself. It is beautiful. You cannot even fathom what I'm showing my partner at this moment, the beauty of being able to see all vibrations way past human sight. Hues of color that don't exist on the planet all the way as far as you can imagine frequencies going bathed in this beauty you are as you sit with me and I look at you and you look at me energetically I know what is coming and I sit at your feet I'm with you right now and we're having this conversation right now. And I say to you this, oh dear one, brother, sister, I love you so much. Are you really gonna do it again? <laughs> and you look at me like I was a child, like I don't know anything at all. And you say, oh,
And where are you going to go this time? <laughs> and you look at me and you say, the same place I was last time, I'm not done. I'm not finished. You say, you say, I'm going back to earth. And not to give away anything I shouldn't give away, I say to you, but there are so many earths to go to. And you say, yes. I'm going to the one I left the last time. And I'm almost in disbelief. Don't you remember what happened the last time you were there? That system is going to take all of that energy of the drama and the fear and the, and the pain and the sorrow and it's, it's going to lay it upon your biology itself and you're going to enter again. You're going to do that. And you say, oh yes. Have you forgotten, I say, what, what that entails. This incarnate process, the difficulty, you have to become linear. You'll forget who you are. You'll forget me. You'll forget the brothers and the sisters and the energy of this moment. You're going to forget the beauty that was there. You won't hear the music playing anymore. You're going to come into a planet part of you is going to be ripped away and it's going to be called the higher self which stays in a place that's almost like, like a, a shell. You can't do anything unless the human on the earth contacts you. It's almost like a spiritual jail. You're going to split in two and, and, and part of you is going to go to earth They won't even remember any of this. In linearity, you're going to be born with a biology that's frail. It doesn't last long. It's susceptible to disease. You could die at birth. You could die when you were three. So why, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Do you remember this conversation? <laughs> and again, you looked at me and you said, because I am in love with earth and it's worth it. It's worth it. Now, I'm crying. I've never, I've never done that. 20 years ago, I came, one of the first things I said is, I, I sit at your feet. I'm washing your feet. Do you ever wonder why I wash your feet? Would you open your heart a minute? Do you know why I wash your feet? Because of that conversation? So I'm sitting here with my open heart, washing your feet to this day because of that conversation. Because here you are. And everything I said happened. You don't remember. Some of you sit in complete disbelief this is even happening. That's how much you don't remember. That's design that way. You got to want to find the spark. And so many of you have. The truth is there and you've discovered it. And the door flies open. You take the hand of God. So few of you do that. I can't believe you're going to do it. I sit there in wonder. In wonder. And then I say, well, where are you going to go? What country? What part of the earth? And then you tell me, you say, I'm going to go back to where my family is, my karmic family. I say, that. There's going to be difficulties there. Can't you select a better one? How about Canada? <laughs> it's a cry out joke. <clears throat> and you say no. And I say, why would you do that? You 
are poised at the core of creation. Best word I have. You can choose whatever you want. You're in charge. You can go wherever you want on the planet. You and the others can design a brand new karmic group if you wanted. And you say, no. I'm going to the ones I left. And I said, why? It's difficult there. Look at, look at the potentials of what might happen. Look at the sorrow. The potential of what might take place. Look at the life that you're about to step into. The potentials are known. The possibilities of what might take place. You really want that? And he said, I wouldn't miss it. Would that group? Would that group? And I look at you and I say, they, they won't even know you're back. They're still sitting around mourning your death and you're going to arrive as a child in their group. They won't even know you're back. That's how unaware they are. You can do that. It's like descending from the lightest light to the darkest dark. And you're going to do that. And you look at me and you said, that's where I'm going. What family? Oh, the one I left. Really? Aren't you tired of them? Look at how dysfunctional they are. That's where I'm going. I can't believe it willingly coming back I said why would you do that why would you do that you know you don't even have to go back and you look at me and you say I am going to finish what I started and you look at me and you lecture me and you say I have been there 3,000 times and there's never been a time where I can finish what I started and this time I can and you're, you're looking at the potentials the same one I'm looking at being in the dark not even knowing who you are not having the family recognize you from the last incarnation they don't have any energy awareness they're not even multidimensional you're stepping back into the dark seemingly why? And you say, because I'm going to find the light and finish what we started, we have an opportunity to make everything right. To do something that very few Earths have ever done. To create a final civilization. The final civilization. Not one of many that are destroyed. Not one of many that get dug up later, the final one. The one that will create a planet of peace. Oh, there will always be disagreements. There won't be one world government. But there will be peace. War will not be an answer. That's why I'm going, you say to me, and you point your finger. Don't you know that? cry on don't you really know that and I say to you I only know what you tell me and you're sitting here <laughs> and so many of the potentials have happened and yes there was sorrow And yes, there was loss of love, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. Was there pain? Yes. And if I could interview you right now at your DNA level in the chair, you would say to me, ah, you found me. And I would say just for a moment while you're multidimensional in this space, what do you think of it now? What do you think? And you would say to me, it was worth it. 
watch what's going to happen. And you wonder why cry and washes your feet. And that's an esoteric, hard level message. Dear human being, that's how I see you. I see you as a grand master. Every single one. When my partner began to channel, I opened his heart almost immediately and let him see and feel what I felt. And in the process, he learned early he had to shut his eyes. It's only recently I've allowed him a few times to channel with them open. I've allowed him to stand, walk around. He doesn't like it much. And I'll tell you why. Because when he shuts his eyes, he can hold my hand better. He's not distracted by the bias of the three-dimensional mind that looks around and sees the things that are 3D. He's addicted to the love of God. He doesn't like me talking about himself. But it's the truth. How would you like that? How would you like to have a truth that gives you so much comfort that's where you want to be. Not floating away in some kind of meditative bliss, but grounded in the love of God, knowing who you are, knowing where you came from, knowing the possibilities of what you can do. And that, my dear human being, is who you are in this place. Every single one of you had this conversation with family before you came in. I watched you come in after that. I've spoken of the wind of birth. It's a, it's a portal that seems to open up like a wind. It blows the linearity. It's is so strident. It feels like a hurricane against the multidimensional beauty of where you came from. Like falling into the abyss and being blown apart. And in you go. And the next thing you know, you're in the birth canal. Did you know that in the first few weeks of life, you remember? Children know. It's very upsetting, by the way, to be born and have the music stop. It's frightening. You're alone. It's so dark. It's so black. The colors are gone. The beauty is gone. The music is gone. And there you are. And all you have is the beating heart of your mother. And it's enough. That's just how, that's just how the heart works. That's what I said last night. Here we are, full circle, aren't we? What are you going to do with this information? What are you going to do with this emotion? Could it be so? Everything I've said, is it possible? Why don't you ask? In the most quietest moment you have without anybody around, you with you, where truth is absolute, where all secrets are known, where there's no possible way you can hide anything from you, you open your heart and you ask yourself, is there more here? Is it possible that I am a piece of the universe? Let your cells talk to you and stand back and start to hear the music and the choir begin again as you begin to turn on a light that we have wanted you to turn on since the day you were born. And I'll tell you something, my friend, if you do that, I'll be there. One of the voices, that's what I do. 
to say welcome home. I am crying a magnetic service. I am in love with humanity. I am your sister. I'm the one you think I am. And so it is in this time that you approach some decision. Not later, but now. And you don't do it collectively. You do it while you're looking in the mirror. That's what makes it hard, isn't it? But if you do it, we're there to meet you. It's a safe thing. And so it is.